So this is a quick tutorial on uh, photogrammetry cleanup uh, retopology. So you just wanted to bring in your scan. Um, you can use any real photogrammetry app for this. Now you want to make your view uh, clip start a little smaller if it, the scan turned out pretty small. Um, and then make sure you can kind of uh, align it so it's flat on the ground. Um, I like to add a little plane to kind of get a good sense of what is truly flat and then line it up from that way visually. It doesn't mean it'd be perfect, but um, as, as close as you can get it. That's pretty nice. And sometimes I like to have it face uh, forward instead of um, what it probably was originally and be centered. So. So once that's done, um, I like to sort of crop out um, using a Boolean operator uh, modifier, uh, the, just the main little object I'm trying to scan. But uh, a good thing to do before you actually end up doing that um, is to, and you can use the intersect, but before you do that, um, it might be a good idea to, and as you can notice um, with this one, the uh, <laughs> The actual vertices um, were all sort of separated in their own little groups. Um, so even if you check on the actual texture later, it's going to be messed up a little bit, uh, as you can see right there. So um, I noticed that this is usually uh, what you want to do beforehand is um, instead, uh, you know, just make sure you kind of clean up the materials, uh, remove the normals because you don't need them, um, and then just make sure you have the actual albedo texture selected. Um, and then from here, you want to go into edit mode, uh, select all the, the vertices, and then go to mesh cleanup, merge by distance, and make sure it's really small distance, uh, and then uh, unselected. And as you can see, it removed like thousands of vertices um, by merging them. So now, when you actually do the Boolean mo modifier, it won't uh, break the actual texture at all. Um, great. So, uh, obviously you have a bunch of extra stuff that you don't want. Um, so the whole next part of this is just by hand, um, <laughs> sculpting it out, um, kind of pushing it out of the way to make it easy to, to select and delete what you don't want. Um, and so, I'm going to speed this up, but Really, my process is um, sort of uh, sculpt out and then select and delete using uh, either the lasso select or the circle select. Um, and it helps to sort of have the x-ray like view um, to get everything um, as opposed to missing things and having to take long or d delete things. Um, so yeah, this is sort of just a sped up um, workflow of me just deleting all the uh, the filler extra stuff I didn't want. Um, sometimes you want to scale things um, based off of a certain view to make sure it's actually flat because um, photogrammetry, you know, isn't perfect. So here I'm just sort of um, kind of cleaning up the, uh, the bottom because you don't really need to see the bottom, um, therefore you don't need geometry there. So once I have something I'm kind of happy with, I uh, export that out as an OBJ. Um, and I only want what I selected, just the mesh, uh, no materials, I export that out. And there's a uh, free program called Instant Meshes, and you just import your OBJ. And kind of choose how many uh, vertex count you want. Um, you can go to the, see it on the, uh, the blender settings in terms of uh, statistics. And I'm gonna go probably about the same because honestly, 7,000 isn't that bad. And save it out. Next step is to import that OBJ that you had just uh, gotten from Instant Meshes. And what you wanna do is kind of fine tune it in terms of making sure it lines with the original one as best as possible. Um, it should be close, um, but I like to be a little extra with it. Um, and as you can see here, I accidentally uh, selected both meshes, so 
Um, I think I'll figure it out in a second here. There we go. Um, so you only want to uh, kind of drag out. And you can do it manually, but I think to be more accurate and precise, um, yeah, as you can see, instead of lining it up manually, it's it's better just to go in onto the uh, little magnet icon up top and uh, have it sort of align and snap to uh, the actual face. And so now it's super quick. You just snap these vertices onto the face and kind of just rinse and repeat until you have, you know, the, the general the general silhouette um, pretty much complete in terms of it one-to-one -one fitting inside the original mesh. As you can see here, I'm uh, simply just sort of filling in um, the legs, uh, which didn't sort of make the uh, transition between instant meshes and Blender. Um, so I'm remodeling them. And this is more manual work. Uh, so no need to have it be exactly precise, but try to get it as close as possible. So I actually forgot to record here, so um, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on UVing. Um, basically, you just select the edges of the mesh that would make a good sort of almost like a sewing pattern. Um, so for example, if it's a cube, um, you may want to just, you know, mark each face individually. And once you're done with that, um, going to edge and mark seam, uh, you hit UV and unwrap. Um, now, and then you can kind of play with the actual UVs um, in the UV editor window, but um, I forgot to record that part, so <laughs> oops. But basically, just think of things as boxes, and um, that might help you. So the way to sort of bake the textures from the low poly to the high poly is you select the, uh, the low poly, and then you select the high poly. But you want to make sure that um, you're using cycles and that there is a texture and material uh, independent from the actual uh, high poly one that you got from the scan. Um, you just want color and diffuse. Uh, indirect and direct is just the lighting, but you don't want that. Um, and then uh, the uh, different variables are up to, for you to play with, but I think those work really well, especially with polycam. Um, so you bake, it takes probably 20 minutes, um, depending on your computer. And, and then there you go, it bakes it to the new texture. Um, so you want to save it, so Alt-S or just hit save. And um, from here, uh, we're going to want to sort of use the clone stamp tool. So you would hit um, control click, um, depending on your key mappings that might be different, but uh, control click. And then you left click on whatever, um, if you've used Photoshop, you might be familiar with clone stamping. Um, but you, that's how you can kind of uh, touch up and uh, clean up the, the parts of the mesh that uh, maybe have holes or um, just didn't have any texture information at all. And you can even manually paint um, if, you, if you feel the desire to. So once you're done with that and have saved your texture, um, you're basically ready. You can just apply all transforms, make sure it's centered and um, all scaled to you know one one one, and uh, you know you're ready for export basically. Um, I always make sure to copy and then uh, hit that little button to make sure that the textures um, embed, and that's it. I uh, hope that was helpful, and have a good day.